So what we're going to suggest tonight that we shift for the 912 students is um, what I think Jackie and, and um, Shannon have talked about in the past quite a bit is, is that A day, B day schedule, day one, day two. I'm going to use those terms synonymously. The way that that would work is that students in the first half of the alphabet, so that last names letter A through L, would attend school every other day while their M through Z classmates would be engaged in distance learning at home. And then on the opposite day, they would do the opposite. So a student would go to, to school, for example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one week, Tuesday, Thursday, the opposite week in the brick and mortar. And then on the days that they are home, they would be um, attuned to asynchronous modules that extend the learning, that deepen the learning, that have students practice their skills more independently at home. Um, we believe that model is sustainable at the secondary level, at the high school level in particular, because of the developmental age of the students. They are more inclined, more driven by credits, um, more cognitively able to structure their days, take care of themselves, etc. And so we, we believe that they would be able to um, manage that at home. Um, the teachers will teach them about maintaining the schedule on their days home, similar to they would be in school. So we don't have kids that are staying up late one night early the next day, back and forth. So we'd, we'd coach kids around how to make it work really well on their end as well. And the um, building high school principals who are here tonight um, have done some work to make sure that our teachers feel well prepared when they're going into this approach. I've talked before uh, about the stress, about my worry about the teacher stress, of worrying about the kids at home at the same time as the kids in front of them. And as far as secondary students go again, that stress can be lessened as far as how we approach our instructional design. And so the, the principals have some um, documents to meet with their staff around to, to start thinking ahead on that. I believe, and they'll have to speak to this if they get questioned, um, during back-to-school professional development time, they're actually going to have some time for teachers to mock out what those um, lesson plans would look like in action so they can see how they can um, not have to worry. And I, I keep pointing behind me because I feel like if they're teaching the kids in front, they're going to be worried about the kids behind them at home that they, they can set up the, um, the construct of their lessons to make sure that those kids are, are well prepared without their guise, without being underneath their tutelage on a daily basis. And so the recommendation for tonight, oh, and so I don't forget to, to add, there are also accommodations that will be made for some of our students that need additional supports on a more regular basis. So for example, if a student has an IEP that would require some sort of special service that we cannot provide through a distance format, we would provide time of the days for those students to come in even on their quote unquote home day to, re to receive those services and, and not just for those students, for other struggling learners. The high school principals were very well aware that there might be some students who don't, for whatever reason, um, uh, participate as much as they should or, or evolve as much as they should as learners when they're on those home days. And so they're prepared to build in additional tutorial sessions on the off days if kids start to slide behind in their studies as well. All kids start to slide behind in their, their studies. So they have a really thoughtful plan in place and, um, and we're confident that, that it can be executed well going in.